group of people that would live in what I call the God groove because we're paying attention to the tune, right? And there's a question, and for us in this hero challenge, is for us to explore the totality and the wholeness of this thing that God's given, us, given to us called our lives. And for us to recognize that everything intersects and overlaps. It's not just one part, right? Sometimes it's our spiritual compartment over here where we pray and we hang out with these people at church and we sort of get together and, and that's, that's one area. And then sort of the physical side and the emotional and the intellectual side and our career and everything else is sort of over here. So we compartmentalize them, which is not, not the correct perspective because they intersect and God desires to be Lord of our lives, not Lord of a portion of our life. And so we're here to learn and to understand that challenge so that we could look at each of these aspects with intentionality and with attention, and we could begin to, to move into a process. The Bible says that the steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord, so we're not looking to just do a cannonball, but how can we take our relationships and live with intention and attention? How can we take our physical life, the fact that the Word says that this is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and how can we, how can we live just moment by moment and day by day making adjustments so that we would recognize that this one life that we have could grasp everything that God desired for us to grasp. And hopefully throughout the, uh, the course of these next several months, there's a question that each of you would, would be able to ask and, and find depth to. And, and I'll ask it today. If we sat around and I asked you, what do you want from your life? I, I would venture to say that many of you, your answers have gone, they're, they're basically, you know, in the kiddie pool right now. Because of the things that take place and the hurts and the past and all kinds of stuff, we just, just our answers aren't that exciting. Maybe you want to do some traveling. Maybe, maybe you, you desire a, a maid, a spouse, and, 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 I don't know, maybe there's, there, there's, there's something specific that you've got, but I believe that God has given each of us something huge, and I want us to be able to have boldness to ask God, God, what is your dream for me in my life? What, what is your dream for me? Psalms 139 says, search me, God, know my heart, try me, know my thoughts, and see if there's any wicked or hurtful way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. See, God, he knows us. He knows the intricate parts of us. He knows what you were created to do and what you were crafted to do. And there is something specific that you've been hardwired for. Your DNA, your personality, your makeup. Sometimes I find over the years that I've been in full-time ministry in, in the church. I mean, I've been in the church since before I was even born. I was in the church, you know, like in my mom's stomach. Anyway. And so I've, I've, I've seen sometimes how things can become very boxed. We can, sort of, we can sort of toss everybody, and sometimes we can, we can tend to, to lose our creativity when it comes to the gifts and callings of people. I mean, the Bible says that my role as a pastor is to equip you because you're the true superstar, so my role is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. But I've come to find out that there is a specific work that each one of you is to do. Every single one of you has been given a unique set of compassion, a unique set of experiences that God uses for a specific reason to do a certain thing in a specific place. It's, it's one thing, not just nothing or just something, but it is, it is one thing that God has given for you to do. And I want us to extract that. And so when we look at the, 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 the wheel Oftentimes, we, we recognize the culture in which we live is, is making a demand, it's making a pull, there's so much, it's, it's almost too frenetic, it's too crazy, chaos. And, uh, and so, uh, a lot of times, we, we can try to make an effort to balance things out. And this is not a series about balance, okay? I mean, I know we love that word, balance. It sounds great, but unfortunately, it really wasn't exemplified by our master and our savior. I mean, Jesus didn't necessarily live a very balanced life. And so this isn't so much about balance, because I don't really believe balance is a reality. Uh, this is more about recognizing the rhythm. There is a rhythm to life 
There is a rhythm to the things that God has designed and orchestrated that you, that you maneuver in in your day-to-day basis. That rhythm is there, and that rhythm is a reality. And as we look at the life of a person who follows to get the maximum that, that God came to give you, how he designed you, and what he created you for, I mean, you will see that it's, it is a, a beautiful rhythmic thing that takes function and takes shape. Now, one thing that you would say about somebody who has good rhythm is you would say that they were graceful, right? It's a pretty good, good word, graceful. And when you are not in rhythm, it is painful, <laughs> right? Have you ever watched somebody, maybe you used to watch, uh, anyways, I- Eileen's dance on, uh, anybody remember? Seinfeld, Elaine, excuse me, Eileen. Anyway. So we, we notice that our lives can tend to break the rhythm which God has given to us. And for most of us, all of a sudden, we're, we're aimless. There's no real prize in mind. There's nothing specific. There's no, there's no map. We, we start to lack rest. And the opposite, obviously, of rest is restlessness. So we begin to become more and more restless. And it, and it can be the fact that we have, uh, we, we have work, we have a job, whatever it is. But, but what's inside of us just begins to be restless. And so we're not experiencing the fullness of God created and desired for us when he came that we would live life beyond our wildest imaginations. And, and we begin to get out of rhythm. Let me, let me read from one of my, I would say, a very interesting book. You know, obviously Solomon had tons of wisdom. But if you read the book of Eccles- Ecclesiastes, it can sometimes just... I don't know, it can could, it could depress a person, all right? Let me just read a few passages of Scripture, see if you know what I'm saying. But this is some of the areas that we get out of rhythm and how we, how we lack the fullness of, of stepping in what God has for us. Ecclesiastes 4.8. This is the case of a man who's all alone without a child or a brother, yet who works hard to gain as much wealth as he can. But then he asks himself, who am I working for? Why am I giving up so much pleasure now? It's all so meaningless and depressing. Ecclesiastes 6, 9 through 10, enjoy what you have rather than deserving what you don't have. Just dreaming about nice things is meaningless like chasing the wind. Verse 10, everything has already been decided. It was known long ago what each person would do. So there's no use arguing with God about your destiny. I mean, th- those are, those, I mean, could identify some of us in here as where we put our energy and our efforts and our attention on trying to amass, accumulate, to, 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 to fill ourselves and dream about and compare ourselves to others and what they have and get ourselves into a place of complete unrest. Have you ever been there? Have you ever just thought about what you were doing and then looked at what somebody else was doing and, be, and been like, why am I not getting to do and be and have what they have? Have you ever felt unrest thinking that thought? Yes, I think all of us would. It's because you weren't created to, to live in, in the fullness of all that God has for you thinking that way. Now, many of you um, understand, or, or, or especially living in the Arizona area, you, you, you have probably attempted or tried or seen something that is a four-letter word called, called golf. And if you've ever tried to play golf, it's a perfect metaphor for what I'm trying to sort of pain as a picture here because in golf there is something that has to happen in every golf swing in order for it to reach the full potential of what God had in store for that golf swing uh, there has to be rhythm and in fact it's easy when you're out of rhythm and your your club head is too far ahead things happen Things unexpected happen, or if you're too far behind, and the golf swing is is perfect. I mean, perfect alignment, perfect grip, good and proper takeaway, a good backswing, all of that, good forward motion and finish, all with the right tempo, in my opinion, represent a good picture for the way that God intended us to live. And when we look at the relationships of our life and the attention that we give to those relationships, 
when we look at taking care of what we put in our bodies and we, and we start to give attention and focus to what we eat and we recognize that as we exercise, more energy comes. And as a result, we feel more alive and alert. And as we take 10 to 15 minutes to ask ourselves, God, what do you want from my life? And you get into a relationship and a, con- a connection with him and you allow time for him to speak over you and say over you the things that he has for you in your heart. And you, you close the door and create a time for intimacy with him, to have a connection. All of a sudden, your heart begins to resonate with what God says about you. You're fearfully and wonderfully made, that all things are possible for you, right? That everything that you set your hand to do would prosper, that he's given you the power to get wealth, that all the things that, that are in his word as you give time to do that in proper rhythm. Now, what if you took all day, every day, 24 hours a day to just sit and pray? You'd be out of rhythm because there are things that God has designed for you to do, people that God has designed for you to serve, to be a blessing to. And so that's why we don't, you know, we, we are not the church of 24 hour, uh, seven days a week. You should be in your prayer closet. That's not biblical. Some of you may want to argue with me about that. I don't think any of you do, but some of you might. You never know. You weren't, you weren't designed to live in that rhythm because that would be out of rhythm. And as a result, if you've ever encountered somebody who is more spiritually minded than they are earthly minded for the people of this earth, you probably have felt a little bit you know, either maybe you felt like you weren't good enough, or maybe you just were like, wow. Or maybe they were just so wacky and strange that nobody could really relate. Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever met someone like that? Or on the other side, you take one area, if you devote your attention in life to, if you decide that you're going to just work out and give attention to it, and that's great, in rhythm, but if you do it all, and that's all you do, you'll begin to get out of rhythm, and as a result, you will not be experiencing all that God has for you. Matthew eleven twenty eight, and I'm just gonna just gonna kind of end with this thought because we're gonna give some attention to something else today. But God desires for us to live in in rhythm. He desires for us to take these areas and for us to maneuver in them. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Then Jesus said, "Come to me, all of you who are weary and you carry heavy burdens, and I'll give you no." into that. Give you rest. Everyone say rest. Rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I'm humble and I'm gentle at heart and you will find rest for your soul. Souls, for my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. In the message it says, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I like that. That's a paraphrase, but I like that phrase right there. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. So rest is a reality and a byproduct of the rhythm that God calls us to live in. Now, the opposite of rest is not work, but it's restlessness. So God's desire for you and I is to live in such a way and in such a place that we were created to live, which is this this word rest. This isn't some place we go when we get enough airline miles and, and hotel miles, but rest is a place that you and I are supposed to live in on a consistent basis. And it's broken down here in Matthew 11. He says, walk with me. Those of you who've been with us for the last several weeks, we've talked about the different postures that we can take in a relationship with God. We, we can live a life over God or live a life under God or live a life that is for God, doing things for him. I've spent some time living for him, traveling the world, preaching to the unreached, doing it for God. But God didn't ask me to do it for him. He asked me to do it with him, in relationship with him. And he says, if you walk with me. Now, obviously, that is not a chaotic word. Walking is a slow word. Some of us in in our relationship to 
the destiny and the thing that God wants to use us for and the things that we know are in the inside, inside of us. We don't want to walk with God. We want to sprint, run as fast as we can to get to what we've, he's called us to do. I think oftentimes many of us, we, we, we literally want to be at the top right away. That's not the process that God takes us through. The thing that God's designed for you is very specific, but it does not take place by you being at the top of it. So if God puts something on your heart to do, I want you to re recognize this. And this has been walked out by you know, multiple people. We can see it displayed by many people throughout Scripture. Sometimes he gives you a picture of what he wants you to do, and sometimes it doesn't come to pass for a very, very long time because he's trying to work something out in your heart. But if you trust and live in rest, then you don't have to be restless. You can live in his rest and experience, still, by trusting him, you can experience what he has for you. So walk with me. Then he says, work with me. Now that's, a, that's an area that you and I have, have yet to fully explore, is our work life. But how many of you know that God, not only is there the work that you do, but there's also a work that God's called you to do. And he has something specific that some of us haven't, haven't yet tapped the surface of. I know m many of us are inquiring. Some of us look at what other people are doing and we want that. But I, I will tell you that there is a work that God has for each of us to do. And, and he calls us to work with him. Then he says, watch how I do it. Watch how I do it. So, so in other words, there is an aspect that you and I have to take time to be able to model the master and to look at what he has for us because as we spend time with him, we also have to watch how he does things. I mean, I heard one person say if you, you can only have the degree uh, or if, if you can only have the degree of the ministry, the things that Jesus did on this earth to the degree that you that you have is compassion. So many of us, we, we want to do things that God has for us, but one of the things that we have to grasp a hold of is his heart and his passion and the way that he looked and the way that he saw. Matthew 9, 36 says that when Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. And so we have to watch how he did it. Then we have to learn the unforced rhythms of grace. We have to learn those things. We have to be able to recognize that God's, that God's grace and his goodness, they operate in a specific form in a fashion. Then he says, keep company, company with me. And then once again, he says, learn to live freely and lightly. So we're, we're going to look at the subject of rest over the next couple of weeks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of open it up. We're going we're gonna to explore a little bit of, from the book of Ecclesiastes. We're going we're gonna to get into one of the wealthiest, mo I mean, when it comes to Scottsdale, this guy would have been the elite of the elite. He would have lived in the double desert mountain area of, of Scottsdale. I mean, this is, this is incredible wealth, yet he speaks and says the words that we heard that chasing after and putting attention to the accumulation of things, in the end, it becomes just meaningless. Does that mean that we should all give up, buy farms, and decide to, to just get away? No, it doesn't. It means that we should not put our attention, our efforts, and our striving, and our energy to only that one thing, but we should bring that thing in context of the thing that God has given us to do so that we can experience the fullness of the rest and the rhythm that he calls us into. Are you with me? Yes. So everyone say rhythm. 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 So we are looking to experience his rhythm. And so what I'm asking you to do is, uh, is to be able to take your iPads, your Nooks, your MP3 players, whatever it is that you interface with on a consistent basis, your social media, whatever, and begin to, to bring the rhythm of God's grace into those areas. So if you take a look at your physical life currently, and you're, and you're recognizing that there's a lot more uh, sitting and waiting than there is exercising, well, let's take some steps to start to make movement in this area and, and start to give a little piece of this to God. What did God say about specifically my body. What did he say about uh, exercise? He said that it profits a little. Hey, 
Little profit is good for us. Let's look at our relationships day in, day out. Let's look at our drive time and each moment and, and the desire of where we want to go and what God wants to do with us and how can we begin to, to place ourselves into that rhythm. Are there, are there movies that while we're watching them, rather than being sort of satiated and just sort of starry-eyed, can we, can we begin to ask, is there something here that God is speaking to us? Well, I was kind of preparing, I was uh, obviously because of the golf swing, I had to, to take some time to, to remember the, the movie, The Legend of Bagger Vance. How many of you have seen that? All right. Well, how many of you, when you watch a movie, you sit down and you take notes? Anybody do that? Am I the only person? Pastor nerd. One thing that I recognize is that because God desires to speak to us at every given moment, it's not, it's, he'll use donkeys, he will use whatever it takes. But you have to listen. The Bible says, he who has ears, let him hear. So what I want you to do is I want you to, to look at the movies that you go to, and I want you to specifically pay attention. Just with intention, say, all right, listen, there's going to be something here. And in the, in the Legend of Bagger Vance, I'm not going to lie, there's, there's quite a bit there, all right? There's, there's quite a bit. I mean, Will, Will Smith, we could, we could argue after church that he identifiably could be pictured as a type and shadow of the Holy Spirit. But I'm not going to go there right now. I'm just saying that he does encourage, uh, you know, Matt, Matthew Damon in, in quite a way that I would say, if you're paying attention, you, you might see. What he begins to encourage him with is something that I believe we go back to Scripture and we begin to recognize. We never take one thing and then you know, build a, a theology on it, but we always take something that we're in the middle of and we begin to bring it to God. And what does God have to say about this? What, is, what does he specifically say? And so each of our moments, each of our doings, uh, the dinners that you will have this week, the time that you, that you have sort of slated and, and organized away, I want you to offer it to God and say, God, this is, this is your week. This is your week because this life is a life that you gave me and I want to honor you in it. So who, who can I encourage? Who can I sit down with? And, and who can I give some time to? Where, where can I spend uh, you know, the, my focus for this week to, to get off my rear end? right? Get off my blessed assurance and, and start to do something. How can I begin to, to spend some time with you? How can I take 10 minutes and do this thing that maybe it feels awkward to me because I've never done it yet, but can I, can I, can I take some steps to be able to, to give uh, attention to, to prayer and conversation so that we can build a stronger relationship so that in everything, at every moment, at every time, I can experience the rest that you talk about in Scripture, that I would know peace that passes all understanding, that I could understand your goodness and your grace. Are you with me? Yes. All right. Would you bow your head and close your eyes with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you call us to enter your rest. You call us to experience a quality of life that each one in here desires passionately, Father, and you do it with grace, you do it with love, you do it with encouragement. And this morning, while our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, if, if you're here and you don't have a relationship with a God who cares passionately about every facet of your life, maybe you don't know how good he is, you haven't heard how much passion he has to showcase his love upon you. Maybe you're not familiar with the sacrifice that he gave once and for all so that you could become a child of God. If you have never taken steps to pray a prayer to experience God's goodness, to receive the fullness of the sacrifice that he gave through his son Jesus. If you're here this morning and you would say, that's me, would you pray for me? I've never had a chance to have a relationship with God. Would you lift your hand up real quick? Is there anybody here this morning? Maybe here today and you would say that, Brad, I, I have not been experiencing rest. In fact, all I've been experiencing is restlessness. I'm restless about my future. I'm restless about what I'm supposed to do. Every time I've got, there's anxiety. There's, there's just so much. Well, I believe that Bible says that we can enter into his rest and I believe that we can come together and, and we can believe and, and, and 
make a declaration for it. If that's you, would you raise your hand and say, that's me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Say, pray for me, Brad. I want to experience the peace of God that passes all understanding because right now I can't figure it out. I can't get my way out. I can't make it happen. Well, let's pray this. Thank you. Together, out loud, would you say this? Say, Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for designing me in such a way that my life could experience real rest. Father, I surrender, first of all, my heart, first of, second of all, my activities, and third of all, everything <laughs> to you so that I could experience all that you have. May your peace that passes all understanding, may it guard, let it guide, let it direct my life in Jesus' name everyone said amen or oh yeah. So for the next several weeks and in just a few minutes we're going to be receiving our, our tithes and offering. There's a communication card in front of you. For the next several weeks we're, we're going to dive more into that specific subject so that we can experience all that God has. This morning I wanted to, to come cut myself short just a little bit because we have a, a pretty special family that is that is here from Haiti. Uh, many of us know, obviously, that, uh, that Shantae is almost, it's almost 12 months that she has given since uh, she decided to, to go to Haiti and to be able to serve alongside the people who have, uh, have been a blessing at COTP. And along the way, there has been some incredible relationships that have developed. Obviously, we uh, twice a year will send teams uh, to be able to experience and to go and to provide support and encouragement and, uh, and just to be a blessing. John, are you here? I want you to come up, and I just want you to, if you would, just to, to introduce a little bit the, the Moxon family, because uh, they're just going to talk about what's been going on. You might have to grab a microphone for them, but uh, they're, they're just going to share what's been taking place, and this is, this is what we as E3 get a chance to invest in, to, to be a part of, and uh, as we're here, we always, we always like to say we pay or pack, but uh, pack or pay, because we're either going or we're sending. But there are uh, families and individuals and stories that are taking shape as we're here worshiping God and doing all that we do as we decide where we're going to rush off to eat. But there are individuals that are serving and giving, and that's a part of what we give to and what we do. So, John, just tell, me, tell us a little bit about how you met the Moxon family, and then we'll have them come up and share. Well, as, as most of you know, uh, and as Brad just expressed, we, we've been going to Haiti twice a year for about four years now, three and a half, four years. And we go and, and you know, spend our time at Children of the Promise Crash, uh, doing whatever we can do to help. Might be painting, might be uh, fixing things, uh, might be cooking, lots of different things we've done. The last trip, my wife and I went for two months and spent obviously a little more time there uh, as opposed to usually it was about a week. And we went pretty much knowing what to expect because we'd been there a number of times uh, previous. And, but an interesting and a wonderful thing happened. While we had, at some point over the four years, met either Bill or Darla, um, we had never gotten to, to know them. We hadn't really interacted at all. Well, this last trip, they were there with Emily. And we got to know them. We got to, to spend time with them. and. As you'll see, they're, they're quite a bit younger than I am, but they're closer to my age than most of you and most of the folks that we take with us on those trips, which blesses us thoroughly. But there's just something about spending an amount of time in a place and finding a special family that we didn't expect or a, or a special situation. It, it turned out to be a family that we, we spent lots of time with them, lots of evenings. Darla was teaching us Creole very patiently, and Bill would be there helping out, and, and Emily also helping and, and uh, making us all look very ignorant. But uh, it just added a dynamic to that trip that we, one, we didn't expect, and, and it just thoroughly, it just was a wonderful experience. So it is with my great pleasure to, that I get to introduce Bill and Darla and Emily Moxon, our wonderful friends from Haiti, 
who are with us this morning. We know Emily, for those of us who follow Shantae, Shantae's blog, she's kind of a YouTube sensation slash Facebook slash blog sensation. But anyway, sorry, I'll be quiet. I want to hear what's going on and tell us your story. We're, we're just really excited to uh, finally be with you guys. We've been hearing about you guys probably longer than you can imagine. And um, I'm just going to share real quick for you to give to give you an idea of kind of where we're coming from, but I want to give plenty of time for Emily to share. I've spoken at um, several, we've spoken at some churches, but usually it turns out being me mostly. And I really thought with the Shantae connection, I thought you guys might be a lot more blessed to hear from Emily. And really, sometimes we jokingly say that Emily's our mission director, because like she has a lot clearer focus and idea of what she's doing than what her mother and I do. And so we've just been like, well, Lord, this is a great ride. Whatever, it, will, it, it works. We'll be happy with that. But we lived, um, we've been in Haiti, we spent eight years in Haiti right out of college. Um, those were really our formative years, um, straight out of, and, and I caught the dream from my wife. Uh, I'm not the one that went to college saying, I want to learn how to be a missionary. I wanted to be an engineer at some real important company, but I met her, and I'm like, wow, I want to go where God wants me to go, and, and let's just see what happens. So anyway, um, we spent eight years, and we had a water project. I drilled community water wells, and I developed hand pumps that I could train the Haitians to really build for themselves and then be able to um, maintain them for themselves. But kind of the model then was, well, that's going to be our, our, our work to be there, but we really want to be about ministry and discipleship and these other kinds of things. And what I found was I was so busy trying to drill wells and doing hand pumps that we never really got to do the discipleship that really increasingly became a burden of my heart. So we came back to the States. We spent 14 years in the States. Basically, we've got, we've got three daughters. Basically raised our daughters. Emily's our youngest. Um, and we kind of we was like, well, you know, that's in the past. You know, God did that. That was awesome. But we're going to pretend to be normal Americans now. And I don't think we pulled that off very well. But then God kind of got us ready and, and, and started doing some amazing things, a lot through Emily, um, where Darla and I had sort of just, as much as we could, we were... Haiti was kind of a, a painful place for us, and I can't get into too much of our testimony, but we really thought that was you know, behind us, and that was good, and, but, but it was behind us. It was our past. But Emily started saying three years ago now, let's go back to Haiti. Why, don't, why, why aren't we in Haiti? Let's go back to Haiti. Mm. And uh, just God really did something with her and stirred, stirred our hearts, and sure enough, God threw open some amazing, miraculous doors, and we find ourselves in Haiti, and our vision, I love what you guys are doing here, the, the heroic. I really, um, I love that God has taken us back to Haiti, and even though we're right next door to the orphanage, and we love the orphanage, and Emily is over at the orphanage every day for hours, she loves it over there, but just as you guys have that struggle of not getting too busy and not letting the doing get ahead of the being and, and what God is doing in us and what he does through us, that's the way I feel like we're at. We're trying to live authentic lives, uh, experiencing God's love and living out of a reaction to, wow, his amazing love. And we love being able to be in Haiti. We don't have people saying, you know, how many wells can you drill this year and, and those kinds of things. But we love just being in Haiti and seeing what God does. And he's been doing some amazing things. But, but Emily and Shante and their friendship and the orphanage next door, we just love being there. I wanted to just, Emily, uh, you have some things you want to share or just go for it? Um, so I was thinking a lot this week, like, if I wanted to talk, what I wanted to say today. And, you know, I thought about, I could talk about the babies or, you know, the daily struggles and joys of living in Haiti. But um, I kept coming back to me and Shante and just how much she's impacted me. And, I mean, you guys are doing, like, a hero, like, um, series so I was like perfect like Shantae has been exactly that through her time in Haiti and um, so I guess like a year ago this time we were back in the States doing what we are now just visiting family and friends and um, all my friends from Haiti had left like their time in Haiti was over so I was going back to Haiti not knowing anyone again and um, so I heard there was a couple going named Adam and Matea and then this single lady named Shantae. So I was like, okay, 
So I got to Haiti and to be honest, I originally was like, no, not Shantae. Like, <laughs> she does not seem like the kind of person that's gonna hang out with a 15 year old. So, okay, I'll hang out with the preschool teacher. But um, just over time, she would start talking to me and like, what do you like to do here? And we just, every weekend we'd plan something to do with the kids and we did pool days and then we did like dress up the kid days and then we started doing sleepovers with the kids and then eventually it turned into, oh, we don't want the kids tonight, let's just have a normal sleepover. And so her and I relationship just continued to grow and she's like a really good person. Like, I'm gonna miss her. And, sorry. Um, I just like to encourage you guys to continue lifting her up and she's a really great person. Thank you. Uh, it, it is kind of a it's, a, it's a great, it's great to have you guys here first of all because I, you know, I cut my teeth, I'll say, in, in ministry when I was, ah, uh, shoot, how old was I, honey? 17, 18, 17 years old, and um, I remember I, I lived in a very uh, similar community to Scottsdale. Uh, I grew up and uh, ended up going to Bible school, and then um, I was young, and just how God had to lead me was just, it was almost crazy, but then when I, when I came back out of that environment, I had the opportunity to, to serve overseas, and this is, I, I worked with an evangelist for many years, and I just, I always thought how absolutely ordinary and how I was just the wrong guy. But God, you know, he just, whatever though, I was going to say yes to him. And um, I just, I, I wonder in your experience, you guys have served there for many years. I think sometimes what happens, sometimes people have this, they have this chasm, you know, where they see somebody who's doing something like this, like living in Haiti. It just, I mean, how many of you think that that's a pretty big move, right? I mean, I would say most of us. But would you, what would you, what was it like to just say yes to that? And then just for a couple minutes, and just to, I mean, I mean, are you guys super, I mean, I, I know you're superheroes, but I mean, were you birthed on a special planet? Was there something, like, you know what I mean? Like, did the, did a, a light shine from heaven, and did the whole, did God appear in physical presence to you? Is this what happened? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll jump on that one. No, the answer is no. Okay, all right, just checking. <laughs> and, and the whole thing about feeling very human and very inadequate. I, I'm feeling very much that way right now. We're, and, and I kind of throw, I'm gonna throw in a prayer request for this. I, I have such a heart for the kids in our community. We have so many kids just in this little area, not, not in COTP, not in Children of the Promise, but the local kids that have families that live around in this area. And yet, I wanna start some kind of ministry. I, wanna, I want these kids to know Jesus, for heaven's sake. But I'm not that kind of person to just stand out and do it by myself. And I've got an opportunity with um, our middle daughter who's coming with us for a month and one of her friends and we're planning some VBS kind of things and some kid classes kind of things. And I'm scared to death. It's just, it's not my forte. <laughs> it's not what I feel comfortable with, but, but I just feel like God keeps putting that on my heart and putting that on my heart. And I'm like, okay, God, I'm scared, but I'm gonna try it. <laughs> so yeah, it's just the whole experience has been that way. We're scared, but we keep trying. <laughs> we keep seeing, okay, God, is this the avenue? Is this what you want? And, well, yeah. You know, it's, it is exciting. We have, we have uh, some families here that have just recently moved from, uh, from their cuddly nests in certain places to be able to come here to be a part of really what God is doing, the work that God's doing specifically in this city. And it's, it's just exciting. We just want to be encouragement to everybody for us to continue to, to, to really press in that it's not, it's just to, what, what God has designed for each of us is so incredible and so awesome. And it's, it is awesome to see a family uh, up here that's experiencing it, but also the reality is, is it's, not as, it's not always just as perfect and pretty as we think because it's called life. 
Um, but there is rest to be able to enter into and to experience. So we're, let's pray for them, and then uh, we're, we're going to be ha- throwing a party for them tonight, and uh, we're going to drop some blessing bombs, and, uh, and also we're going to party with purpose because that's what we like to do. But let's just pray for them. Would you just stretch your hand forward? This is, there's not something weird about this. You're not, you're not throwing lasers at them, but it's just, it's just an... This is, we're, we're, uh, it's, you know what I'm saying, all right. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this family. We thank you for the Moxons, God. We thank you that you surround them like a shield, that your favor and your goodness surrounds them like a shield, Father, that you have given them gifts, that you have placed inside of them a heart and a passion to do some amazing and incredible things. And Father, we just thank you that you're meeting and supply, supplying every need for every dream, for every thing that they can, that they can imagine. And Father, we thank you that, that you continue to increase and to expand their vision and what you have in store for them. And we just ask that uh, supernaturally, Lord, that you would just connect us with them. As we ask, how can we be a blessing? How can we, how can we serve the community of, of Haiti and these children and these families and these people so that we can be a blessing? Specifically, Lord, what can we do? How can we bless them? How can we encourage them? How can we be a part of what you're doing through this family in this area? And we thank you for them. We thank you for them being here. And we just ask that, that uh, your love and your goodness would, would just chase after them and all that they have. And that this thing that you are birthing in their hearts to be able to reach out and to step out, Father, that you're guiding and you're leading every facet of it. In Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen. Oh, yeah. Give them a hand. You guys can be seated. Yeah. Thank you.